Hello everybody, welcome to Tokyo. It is a hot summer afternoon. Maybe one of the hottest of the year. I am melting. Oh my gosh. It has been a brutal summer and we've had temperatures as hot in Tokyo as 38 degrees Celsius, which I believe is, I guess that's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's not just the temperature that makes this so difficult. And I harp about this every single summer. It's the humidity coupled with that heat. With this, beautiful sunny skies, they look really nice, but it beats down with, on you just like that humidity. And in this episode, I wanna talk about the 10 reasons why you should stay the heck away from Tokyo and Japan in general during July and August. Um, it's really hot. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just gonna have to keep walking. Maybe we'll find some shade and, and hang out you see there's like a little some shade from the signs so maybe we'll go hang out right there all right so uh, it does appear a little bit closer because I have stabilization on it really uh, balances out any of the wobbles from the from the gimbal it does a pretty good job although you get to see my face in glorious uh, HD here all right let me take a let me show you the uh, list of 10 reasons why perhaps you should stay away from Tokyo Number one is obvious, high temperatures. Summer in Japan can be scorching with temperatures often exceeding 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That's like all through the country. But in, in, in to, between, between uh, Tokyo, actually I should say between Sendai and Kagoshima, it can get up to 38, 39. And this year it's gotten up to 40 a couple of times. 40 degrees is 105 degrees Fahrenheit roughly, plus the humidity. So that's number two, high humidity. Humidity levels can, can be extremely high, making the heat feel more intense and leading to discomfort. Discomfort is an understatement. Uh, number three, typhoons. We've, we've dealt with this over the last couple of, uh, a couple of weeks as well, because some, some big ones have rolled through. Typhoon summer months bring the typhoon season, which can lead to travel disruptions, cancellations, and safety concerns. Travel disruptions are a big deal. If you gotta get back on a certain day, I've been telling everybody, make sure you go back home maybe a day before you're supposed to start work for recovery, and also in case your flight is canceled for whatever reasons. It's nice to go back a day early anyways. With the jet lag, you're gonna thank me for that. Uh, crowds, many tourists flock to Japan during the summer months, leading to crowded tourist spots and longer waiting times. Very true. In particular, in the heat, it's even worse. So the last thing you wanna do is be lining up for a dish or cuisine or a restaurant or food or an amusement park ride. The waits are longer because Japanese also have holidays too, leading to the perfect storm. And now since, and now with Chinese tourists coming back here for the first time in many years, I expect those lines to get longer now. Maybe not today, but soon. And number five is the peak tourist seasons along with the crowds, accommodation prices rise during the summer peak seasons. Supply and demand, it's as simple as that. It's simple supply and demand economics. All right, let's walk down this way here. You don't actually have to look at me, which is, which is kind of uh, in itself a little bit much. Vintendo writes in here, going to Japan in a couple of weeks from now, staying for two weeks, hopefully gets a little chillier, uh, cooler. I, I would say so. Once September 1st hits, for some reason, it really does cool down. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk and then uh, show you the next 10. And then I think there's an extended 10, uh, there's an extended 15 if you guys are interested in that. Let's go through this list really quickly. Here's the first 10. Let's go through this list really quickly, and then uh, uh, I'll, go, I'll go through the extended extended 25, because there's more than, more than this. All right, limited ac outdoor activities. Yes, oh my gosh. Extreme heat and humidity can limit outdoor activities, especially for those not accustomed to such conditions. If you're not used to this type of heat, I, I've had friends from Singapore come and go, this is too much. And when you have Singaporeans come in here and say, this is too much, that says something. It really does. Not every day is going to be ridiculously hot and humid. This one's not too bad. The humidity is a little bit lower, but, you know, when you're outside, you can't stay outside for very long. You, you really cannot. You're, it's just too humid, and you weigh yourself down. It's, it's like running a marathon every day. Heat-related health issues. This is so true and something that's very hard to catch. Heat 
really bad, bad bout of dehydration uh, in the, the first couple weeks of July this year. Uh, I was getting dizzy. Feel it when you're dehydrated. Sometimes it's not just a quench for thirst. It's something you know your your body is, is uh, you know it affects your mind and, and so many things when you're dehydrated. This is a definite concern. Attractions are closed at this time. Some attractions may close due to the heat or for maintenance. Summertime and this is in particular during the typhoon season and during the holidays. Places might close, so you might get limited availability to certain places. And sometimes places are in un uh, how do I say this they're not available because they're already booked you got to book months and months in advance for some places uh, popular places because it is uh, peak season number nine uncomfortable travel I can I can vouch for this I had to stand I had to stand uh, let me get some uh, classical music here this is Ginza after all I had to stand on the Shinkansen for three hours it's not comfortable in the heat and you, let's say you spend all day walking around, you get on the, your feet hurt, you get on the Shinkansen, and it's standing room only. That stinks, and it happens so often, in particular during Obon holiday, but summer holidays. This year it was so bad because everybody was traveling uh, again. Uh, let's get back into this list here. Number 10, limited comfort in traditional attire. I thought this is funny that this all comes from chat GTP. I thought that this is funny because yeah, they're not wrong. If you're wearing a yukata and you're trying to wear a kimono and you're in this heat, trust me, it's not comfortable. And a lot of people forego wearing the yukata at the fireworks festivals this year because it was too hot. The last thing you want to do is wear a cotton robe. You want What you want to do is wear nothing, personally. But a jimbe or something even lighter than that, something mesh, something where the air goes through, um, it's not enjoyable. You get the picture and then you want to just change. It's all sweat. It's really bad. I, I don't think that you guys can understand here. Heat stroke, Sean Lee writes in from Singapore. Heat stroke, no joke, stay cool, stay hydrated. Love from Singapore. Thank you, Sean. Absolutely, it's no joke. Um, like, I've, I've had it. You, 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 you're just exhausted. I'm going to teach you, teach you guys this. Let me, let me get rid of these here. I'm going to teach you guys a summer word from that uh, Japanese told me here about about uh, staying in Japan. And my, I see Michael Sasano is here. Aloha. Uh, looks pretty nice. Humid day where you are. A must to get yourself something cool and refreshing. Do you mean something cool and refreshing like this? All right. Before I go to the extended list, I want to say that there are some wonderful things about summer and reasons to come here include summer foods like kakiguri. You can eat more ice cream, although that might not be great for your waistline. That's there. There's cold sake, right? You can have, uh, um, you're going to be drinking more from vending machines, which is kind of fun. There's uh, uh, nagashi somen, which is uh, uh, noodles that come down these bamboo shoots, which are kind of fun out in the countryside. There's lots of things with summer that are great. Longer days, you have more days of sunlight where in the winter you have really short daylight time and it's kind of depressing if you come later on. So I, I, I kind of like the fact that the days are longer. I also like the fact that it is warm enough where you can wear shorts and short sleeves or go to the beach, which is also another thing here. Now the beach is not great in the late August and September because the jellyfish come in and you can get stung. So July and, and the first three weeks of August are probably the best. Right now it's getting jellyfish season and that's why the beaches closed down September 1st, mainly because people go back to work and the jellyfish are just hideously awful uh, at this time. But uh, let's see if we can find a kakiguri or something. There are also the summer festivals. This is the Nebuta festival. Some of you might recognize this one. These are Nebuta floats uh, made from, from paper, colored paper, and it is so beautiful. And the, But what, what I'm struck most by the Japanese festivals are the use of taiko drums. And it really does, the beats stick with you the entire year. There's this amazing energy you get from it, in particular at the Nebuta Festival, places like Earth Celebration on Sato Island, uh, the Kanto Festival, festivals all through Japan, the music, the dancing. It's, it's, it's really what is uh, uh, quite special here in Japan. You know, the dancing, the Bono Dori, you cannot forget the Bono Dori. Uh, people uh, out during the holidays, doing the bone dance. Uh, there's a couple of them still taking place. There's, there's a few in Tokyo. If you're in the city now, you might want to go and, and check out the bono dori.
It's definitely uh, a fun experience, a very cultural time. At Gimby Lee's here, the Shibuya Sky is a good place to propose asking for a friend. I, I don't know. I wouldn't propose there. I'd, I'd go out in the countryside or find a, a forest or something. I don't like giving a lot of people around, you know. But with that said, I can't, you know, some people go to the middle of Hachiko. Hold on, let me get rid of this picture here. Some people go to the middle of Hachiko to propose. I've seen somebody take a, take a knee in the middle of the intersection. It's a little much, but if you both have this shared love in Japan, I can't say it's not a bad, it's not a bad place. It's a beautiful place. Congratulations to your friend. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not somebody who would, I think it's a personal thing, but like I wouldn't go to a stadium and propose on the big screen. Has anybody, any of you done that? I don't know. Tokyo, Kana would kill me. She would say no. There's no way she would say yes to that. You just have to know the personality of the person you're with. All right, so like there's some good, I'm gonna hide in the shadow here. Oh, it's so hot. We're gonna go find a vending machine as well. What do you think about that? Oh, this is nice. We got a little bit of shadow going on here. All right, there's uh, there's an extended list that I got from. Um... Oh, here it is. Let's just pull these all up here. So we'll go with the one to twenty-five. This is all from Chat GPT. All right, but I think. It's interesting because I'm going to see how accurate ChatGTP is this with my, my 25 years of Jeopardy Summers. See if it works here. 25, limited energy. Yes. Oh my gosh. There's a word that Japanese say called Natsubate. Natsubate. Natsubate is this heat exhaustion. And you just get darui, like exhausted. And you move not well. You just move slower in the summer. And by the, this time of year, you just don't have a lot of energy, which is why people are eating ramen and high stamina foods to try to get that energy back. It's the energy out of you. And day after day, you get into this natsubate, like, uh, I don't know, dysfunction from heat. So definitely take it easier than you normally would. Try not to, try not to go to too many places. Try not to fit too many things and do things in the morning. As I said, between 5 a.m. And, and 11 a.m., you could probably get a day's worth of stuff. Take it easy from 11 to 3 and then go back out and, and uh, try to survive the rest of the day. Take a little siesta. Limited local experiences. Yeah, outdoor activities. Sometimes if it's too hot, they're, they're limited in the city. Uh, not, to a lesser extent, I might not agree with this one, but. Out in the countryside, if you go to Karuizawa, the mountain areas are a lot cooler than here. So the temperature might be, I don't know, 15 degrees cooler in Nagano than it is out in the center of Tokyo. You also have the urban heat from the asphalt, which definitely makes it feel a lot hotter. In fact, um, let, me, let me turn this around here, check surface temperatures. I brought this with me. This, well, this is a... Um, uh, infrared gun that that measures the surface temperatures of places. So let's do that with some, with the asphalt here. All right, the asphalt is 52.53 degrees Celsius. Let's take a couple of sample areas. 51. So the asphalt is 50 degrees. Holy smokes! All right, and then this is in the shade shade it's 45 on the asphalt that's this is pretty accurate I didn't expect it to be that hot let's let me check out the the uh, sides of the building here or some metal all right let's check out this metal All right, 41. Holy smokes, that is hot. Uh, let's check out this metal grate. All right, that says 41. But the asphalt... I can do it in Fahrenheit. 
it's it's 125 if I go under the middle here. All right, 129. It's 127 on the surface. So <laughs> that's you get this coming up from the surface, which makes the the air temperature feel even hotter. So you got that. All right, let's go back to this list here. Um, Difficulty with reservations, absolutely. Too many people, in particular this year because of revenge tourists, so I would say that's true. You have to book for August, I'd say three months in advance minimum if you want to get a place that is uh, um, popular. You know, like an onsen that everybody wants to go to or a particular place that's in social media all the time now. Three months minimum. Six months would be preferable if you really want that place. Uh, number 22, less, sev less serene nature. Yeah, if it's too hot, it's not as nice. Even the animals don't come out, you know, until nighttime. The, gr the green grass sometimes will die away and it turns yellow. Hokkaido is typically, like, if you're coming to Japan in the summer, that's great. But I would recommend getting on a flight and going three to four days in Hokkaido just to cool off in the middle of your vacation or going to Nagano and jumping into a river or something because it is that hot. It's not a fun time if you were to spend a week in Tokyo in summer. I don't think people understand that. I can keep saying, talking about it, but I don't know if people get that yet. Um, I'll take some of your questions. It's hard to see the screen right now. Um, expensive travel. That's true. Because of the, the peak time, the costs for air, air flights are really marketably higher. I noticed like Usually I can get a get a flight that they, they have A and A has a limited amount of uh, 45 day tickets. If you buy it 40 day, 45 days in advance, A and A will sell it to you for like a I think it's like a like hundred and hundred hundred dollars about for a domestic flight, but a little bit over hundred bucks. But I find that those fares have been sold out, and the next available one is like the uh, one week in advance, which is like two hundred dollars, and then after that it gets up to like three hundred dollars for a domestic flight. So. Those flights have been going pretty quickly, and even Skymark and all the other places, it's like an auction site, so the prices for the uh, flights can be quite high. Shinkansen will stay the same, but there's limited availability. As I said, you might have to stand. Um, sweating and discomfort, number 20. Yeah. Yeah. You're basically living in your own wetness for the rest of the day. It starts around 8.30 in the morning. If you're outdoors, unless you're in air conditioning, you just start sweating. It just starts coming out of your pores. You can't help it. And if, and by 9.30, it's drenched. It doesn't make a difference if you go back to your hotel, take a shower, and put on another shirt. It's going to happen again. So you're going to just have to learn to live wet. So there could be some rashes and stuff, summer rashes, as a result of just being wet all the time. I wish it was sociably acceptable to take off your shirt and walk around. But then again, when you think about it, you see a lot of people probably not in... <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. Just saying, socially polite. Um, number 19, limited photo opportunities. You won't, you won't see Mount Fuji. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that I brought this one up. It's true. You, it'll be a perfectly sunny day, and you won't see Mount Fuji at all. And that is a result of, uh, of the, sh the haze from the heat. So this list is pretty darn good. I see Ellis and David are here. How do you do, brothers? Have some cool drinks and maybe buy some new shoes if you haven't already melted yet. That's a good point. Let me stay in the shade. Thank you, Ellis. All right, let's go to the other list here. Moving along, moving along. This is fun. I have to get the lists up here. All right, next one. Gosh, it's so hot. Number 18, limited English information. I think that, that could be at any time. Google, I don't think it's as bad as everybody makes it out to be. And if you're going to be traveling to an international country, and you better learn a little bit of the language and a little bit of the culture. Do it on the flight. Put, put down that little small screen movie cinema thing and just study a little bit of the language. It's going to make your trip more 
more enjoyable. And, you know, look, if you, nobody speaks Japanese in America, not that many, vice versa. I think that's part of the adventure. Limited transportation, typhoons can be disrupted. Yes, that's true. Ba language barrier, dealing with heat related issues uh, could be more challenging if you're not fluent in Japanese. That's a possibility. I'm not sure if that, that would be my list. Closed shops and restaurants. Doctors can usually speak English if they're under the age of 50, I found, because they're studying um, English literature and they have to read that for their job. So they, typically they can read it and sometimes they can speak it. Closed shops and restaurants. Some similar establishments might have summer holiday hours. Don't agree with that. I think the hours for summer are longer, not shorter, uh, because the daylight is longer. Nice try, chat at GTB. Um, limited comfort in a traditional attire. That's true. Kimono is not great at this time. Uh, sunburn risk. Yes, I have been burned a couple of times where I had to stay out of the sun for two days, which is fine because I'm editing. But it's it's hot. You want to stay in the shade. With the humidity and your skin wet, it just burns much much easier. Unpredictable weather. Yes, it can go from rain to sun to rain. It's very tropicalish like that. But the typhoons can come in if you're not watching the weather report and will surprise you. Um, they come in like once a week, but they don't always hit. They don't always hit Japan, you know. So insects, yes, mosquitoes are a problem in Japan. Um, out in the countryside, there's always a risk of Japanese encephalitis. Some people, some people ask me if you need to get that shot. I haven't heard of anybody getting Japanese encephalitis here in 20 years. So I'm not sure if. If you're staying in the cities and urban regions, you don't need a Japanese encephalitis shot, I don't think. But if you feel, I'm not a doctor, so if you feel like you need to, I think you should do it. But I, I think urban areas are probably going to be fine. But, you know, asterisk mark. Uncomfortable travel, public transportation can become cramped. That's 100% true. It's interesting. All right, let's see here. Now here's the, uh, let's finish this list here, one to 10. I had it. All right, here's the final list. Extended. And the, I think these are self-explanatory. Limited outdoor activities, closed attractions, heat-related health issues, limited availability, peak tourist seasons, Crowds, typhoons, season, high humidity, and high temperatures. The first five are obvious, I think. And you see it. Let's walk around. And you can see the people here typically don't wear shorts. Almost everyone wears pants. I think they're kind of crazy, but um, but that's that's you know Tokyo. That's the big city. You know, I wear shorts and tank tops if I can. I don't mind too much. No one will snicker at you that you can hear, but they might when you leave. <laughs> I, the biggest thing with Japan is people will not conf confront you and complain to your face. What they do is they make a side comment from the side of their mouth. And you don't do that in America because that's when you get slugged because we can hear that. Either come and say it to somebody's face and you know, be polite, but the side comments that Japanese make, like you hear it, and because I can understand it, I hear it, I, a part of me, the American side of me wants to confront that person, like, yeah, I know what you just said, say it to my face, man, if you're gonna, why make a side gutter comment and leave, like, what, that's more annoying than the comment itself, I, I don't, you know, just tell me, be a man about it or an adult. That's probably the better way to say it. Be an adult about it. But <laughs> that, this happened to me just a couple days ago. But uh, I, I, I always take that urge and I put it in my pocket and I walk away and I just smile. And that's what they do in Japan. When you, whenever you're kind of, don't confront people, smile because it pisses them off more and walk away. That's the best way to do it. Hey, Jules is here. Jules Garcia writes in here. What do you think about January? I think January is, is um, after, Obo, after a Shogatsu, which is the New Year's time, it is low season. So the prices are going to be right. Um, there's going to be really short days. So it gets dark around 4.45 p.m. And the sun comes up around later, like around 7.30. So you get shorter days, but 
you know, it's the everything is cheaper. Um, you know, the the air is dry, and this is the biggest. I'm, in my experience, the reason why I don't like winter, it has nothing to do with the cold. Or, I love the snow. It has everything to do with the dryness of it. My fingers all chap up. You got to wear cream all the time, because. It's like extremes here in Japan. Summer, humidity is just like rocket, skyrocket high. But in the winter, the lack of humidity is just uncomfortable. And that is, uh, you know, that's why I don't like winter in Japan, to be honest. It's just the dryness. And the dryness leads to people getting sick more, catching colds more. Um, you know, I try to avoid public transportation as a result. That's when you get sick in the winter because of the dry air. It's just so conducive to uh, uh, transmitting this stuff to other people. So that's another reason why summer is not too bad, I guess. You think about it. So I don't hate summer or winter. I'm just saying there's things that I there's things about every season that I could probably uh, find a thousand positive things, but this time for summer I found 25 not so positive things. I mean, do you want to come here and sweat for? 12 hours a day and after three days of traveling in Japan not only do you have jet lag but you have uh, exhaustion from sweating and the heat and you don't even want to go outside anymore it's that bad so that's what I'm saying and the fact that uh, there's already so many tourists here it might be worth taking that holiday from work in September or October in particular or in May which is the best season in Japan we're, we're now headed towards um, Ginza Yonchome, which is the main intersection here. And you can see they've taken away that cafe that was on the corner, which has been here since the 1980s. As far as I, I can tell, that building had been here forever, and I guess they're, they're tearing it down for something else. So there's no more Dotoro co coffee shop here, and there's no more, was it Sanyo? I can't remember, the cup noodles or something like that. I can't remember, there's no more sign there. And I believe they're tearing down that whole building. I don't I don't know for sure, but it seems like it would make sense to just put in something bigger to make more money off of it. Why renovate it when a circle is not a actual big money maker? A lot of TV cameras are here. I wonder why. All right, let's, let's take a heat sample from right here, and we're going to heat sample this lion. All right, asphalt. 132 degrees Fahrenheit. 55 Celsius. Oh my gosh. All right, let's take a heat sample from the lion. Fifty, 52 degrees. 126. Holy smokes, that is... Oh! It's giving varying... 50, it's over 50 degrees uh, Celsius from that lion. We'll take the. That takes the, because it's air conditioning. The against the uh, uh, sun, the solar heat. Oh my gosh! The Ginza lion is 52 degrees Celsius, and the street is 55. Oh my gosh. 131 degrees on the uh, ground coupled with humidity like this is why you should be like her and stay inside Whew. how do the pigeons do it how do the pigeons stay cool do they sweat don't know <laughs> Just asked him and he just walked away. Whew. Oh man. Uh, you can see the Apple building is gone. Thank goodness. I think uh, Mischief Night would have been really rough for the Apple building should it had stayed in that position. They did move down the street to Ginza Hachome, which is the eighth. 8th Street, this is Ginza Sancho May right here.
There's eight intersections uh, going up and down the street. So it will take you about 20 minutes if you uh, walk it. Kind of just leisurely walk. I like how on the weekends they shut down the street so you, you can walk on the 55 degrees Celsius, 132 degrees Fahrenheit road. And if you try to do it barefoot, all right, let me try it. Oh my gosh. I have to report to you. All right, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. It's burning. Woohoo! Right, that's bending machine. Oh my gosh, that is hot. Yeah, if you, anyone wants an update, I did get money for the stolen iPhone from American Express. The, the Tokyo police didn't want anything to do with it. Where did the... Uh... They used to have a, oh, there's some vending machines down here. Tokyo police were uh, polite for the first couple of weeks. Then they tried to work with Apple, and Apple completely, um, how should I say this, like stonewalled them. And the police said that there was nothing that they could do. Apple made them write a letter for, for access to get the number that would be required to trace the phone. It's like they, it's, it felt like Apple did not want to help find a stolen phone. And that's what really made me upset. And even the police were frustrated. And after a while, there's nothing that they could do. That's what they said. And that made me even more upset because the law is the law and they have to follow that. So after I'd filed the police report and I would pleaded with American Express countless times, they finally gave in and said, OK, well, why didn't you tell us you had the police report? I said, I did. And it took them a couple of months and they refunded it and I'm thankful. But I think I, I spent more than that just in effort trying to get the money back. Now, I don't buy this Icy Spark because they put salt in the water and I don't like that. So that's a shame. The uh, Wilkinson's is more all natural. Look, it's sold out. They sold out. The hojicha is available, but it's in the smaller pet bottles. All right, we're going to have to get this uh, super strong one. Apparently, it, it reduces body fat. This is black bean tea. That's something. All right. They didn't have the Oi Ocha Artero. They were sold out. You have to go with the premium stuff. That's the first to go. Oh, oh my gosh. That is nice. It's got more of a grassy taste to it. And some salt from the sweat on my lips. Interesting. Um, by the way, this is the first, first Starbucks in Japan. I remember I came here when I arrived here in 1998 because it was here also. There were only a couple of Starbucks. Not that I was missing Western culture, but this Starbucks was the first one uh, that came to Japan. It was like their test shop, and the test was successful. And if you just walk in that door, you'll be able to see it. Hold on, maybe I can just pop in there and just show you there for a second. Yeah, there's still a, it, that, that entrance is closed. There's a, um, a plaque that says it's the first store in Japan. That's something, you can go and touch it. I've put my sweat on there a couple of times, so I'm gonna wash your hands. Oof. You know, one of the great things about Ginza is that, yeah, the asphalt might be 55 degrees Celsius, 132 degrees Fahrenheit, but the air conditioning being pumped out of the stores really cools you down. That feels good. Sweat. Uh, it's a reason for you to stay inside the shops. So the streets are not so crowded. Most people are inside the shops. Um, not buying anything, 
Just staying cool. Oh, maybe they're buying something. I don't know. All right, let's get back to the main street here. I'll take some Is it hotter than usual in Tokyo? I, you know, every year if you ask me that, I'm gonna say it's hotter than usual because it, I'm outside right now, but it feels the same as every other summer. I'll be honest with you, we've had some summers that were a little bit milder and some summers that were a little bit hotter. It just feels hotter, but it always feels like this because of the humidity. And that's, what, that's the biggest difference between Tokyo and Singapore or the Philippines, for example. Philippines also gets high humidity. But there's just something different about Japan that makes it worse. Maybe it's the urban, the asphalt. I, I don't know. Or maybe people just don't dress down. They're wearing heavy clothes in the summer anyways. I don't know. There's something, something wrong. Uh, just a heads up that, that uh, Kit Kat place is out of business. Uh, if you're thinking about getting a gourmet Kit Kats for a ridiculous price. Oh, look at that vending machine. What's new? Yeah, Tokyo. My gosh. Um, Tully's has been really pumping out a lot of canned drinks lately. Oh, this is the one that I like. I'll always get the uh, Wilkinson's because they don't have put any salt in it. It's, uh, it's a better drink. Salt is not a bad thing, but I, I don't like the... I don't know what kind of salt it is. Is it processed salt? Is it you know, sweat salt? I don't know. Right now, premium lemon is the drink for Fanta. And you don't see this Coke Zero very often in vending machines. Yeah. Interesting. I'm actually walking around a little bit longer because I got email messages of people visiting Tokyo that said, where are you going to be tomorrow? And I said, Ginza. And apparently, they didn't stop. <laughs> it's okay. I go on a little bit longer. It is nice to have a sombrella too. I mean, you really do burn faster in Japan because of the humidity and the sunlight. It's just, uh, you know, when I first came to Japan, I thought it was ridiculous of how many people that had a sunbrella. I was like, really? But the longer you stay here, the more you realize that they're pretty smart. Because if you're going to be in the sun all the time, Umbrella is a pretty good idea to keep you from getting exhausted. See that? All right, let's walk to the end of the street here. Uh, I'll take some of your questions. Whew, it is hot. Oh my gosh, it is just beating down on you, the sun. Describe my feelings. There you go. He <laughs> asks me every 30 seconds, I'll say the same thing. Saya writes in something that's super smart. And I learned this in my first year in Japan. Let me turn the camera around, I can talk to you guys. I learned this in my first year in Japan. One of the gifts that you'll get from people uh, when you move into a house, you'll get like hand towels. And you don't quite comprehend, why the heck would you give me this little teeny towel? Can't use it in the bath. It's not even something you could put on a rack to dry. It's so small. But it's for days like this, because you need something to wipe the sweat off. And the first thing that you should do if you come here in Japan in the summer, is to stop off at, you can do it, Itoya right there. You can go to Daiso, the 100 yen shop. Get yourself some uh, small hand towels, because Wiping the sweat is going to become a ritual for you every five minutes. And it, it's super useful. At the end of the day, wash that towel out. You know, when you take a shower, I usually will scrub it, leave it to dry on, a, on the rack, and then the next day, use it again. They have these uh, cool towels I found in the U.S. with silver in it or something. That, that might be something useful. But, uh, you know, in Japan, we've been just using these towels. They're, they're really, really small. Um, no, I prefer walking right down the center of the street. Hey, I don't mind being hot. I, you know what? 
I prefer to have the space and be hot than to walk where everybody else is because I tend to go on to the path less, less taken. There must be a reason why no one walks down the center of the street. I just blocked off. After that, throw that towel away. I don't want to smell my own sweat. Well, Jody, if you're eating healthy, your sweat shouldn't smell, smell that bad. Here's a funny thing, all right? In Japan, and I'm talking to, to Westerners in particular with this. Okay, I can sit down here in the shade for a second. That's a good idea, let's sit down. Oh my gosh, this is so inviting. Wow, we got a chair. This is really good advice. This is something that, that's a pet peeve. All right, so in Japan, people don't wear perfume. They don't wear perfume like, um, hold on, I can. Put, put the mic here. They don't wear perfume like in the, in the West. It's cologne and stuff. When I go back to the US, the thing that annoys me the most, cultural shock wise, is the cologne and the scents and the perfume that everybody wears and it smells like a it smells like a garbage can of smells, really, to me. Because in Japan people use soap and the bodies don't particularly smell bad. There's a nice pleasant smell of soap. Now when, when my foreign friends come to Japan, I smell their cologne and there's like a fume that comes from it that hurts my eyes. And I think it has to do with just being here and not having, I have no tolerance for, for perfume and cologne anymore. Scents and all this stuff that you're marketed to that you need to smell this way. Soap smells awesome. Ivory Spring, Dove, but you go to the Japanese uh, supermarkets or the uh, uh, pharmacies, you don't see deodorant, like Old Spice and stuff. You might see like uh, alcohol wipes and stuff to wipe your bodies. But I haven't gotten like really nasty smelling people in Japan like I did when I was in Europe or the US. It could have to do with diet. I don't know. But in Japan, it's not that bad, but it's, it's worse when you have the, all these perfume smells masking it and it just stinks and then you have these fumes of a of hundred different people's you know perfume and deodorant from the west uh, I, I didn't notice it for the last three years and since tourism returned you start to smell people's like sprays and it's not pleasant and yeah it's hot dove Potpourri of body scents. I'm trying to read there. I always get those colognes at Matsumoto Kyoshi. Well, I can't smell it. I don't think Japanese wear it, even unless you're on a date or something. But uh, I don't like it. And uh, I had my friend, hey, I have a pretty high tolerance of, of for pain and for, don't test me on it. I probably will scream, but. Uh, high tolerance for being annoyed, more so than most people. And uh, <clears throat> Japan, actually in Japan. And uh, <laughs> my friends, whatever he sprayed every day, the first two days I tolerated it. On the third day, I remember we were eating lunch, I couldn't taste the food because his scent was so strong. And I said, I said, bro, what are you wearing? And you know, I didn't say it in a mean way. Actually, that sounded mean. What are you wearing? And he told me, I said, do you need to wear that? And he goes, what, it's nice. I said, no, I can't even taste. I, t I was honest, I can't taste my food. It's so strong. I think maybe people are just have such an acute sound, taste and smell in Japan that they don't want to offend other people, so they don't wear it. I don't know why, but the perfume industry is not big here. Your comments. 
Well, you've never been a junior high school. What? Junior high school. Okay, that's true. I haven't been to a high school. High school with all those teenagers might stink. But then again, that's my point. They don't wear stuff. But I think it's more like the fact that they only have one uniform and they don't wash it. It's more maybe the uniform than actually them. All right? They probably wash it every third day or, or something. Right? Because they, they don't have any free time, these kids. They get home. All right? They got to go to Juku and study. Parents are probably busy. By the, by the time they really get home, it's like nighttime and they got to wear it the next day. A lot of homes don't have dryers. So the only time you, you wash it, you have to air, hang, it, hang it out. The only time you wash it is on, on Friday for the weekend. And even then, some kids got school on Saturdays or they got to wear their uniform. So I feel bad. So summer, it does stink, but I think it's more of the clothes. Yeah. Like, I don't mind a little bit, but oh my gosh. It's just, uh, it doesn't match with Japan. Speaking of perfume, I told you this story a couple of times, but let me pan over in this way. If you look down the street past that umbrella, if you go down about four blocks, hold on, about six blocks, you get to Abercrombie and Fitch. I believe they still got that skyscraper there. And, and uh, Abercrombie got in deep, deep trouble when they opened up the shop. And I think it was like 2007, 2006 or seven. They had these dudes with no shirts walking around outside. And I think they got slapped down by local, uh, local uh, association or something. Then they started cranking out their perfume scent into the streets. And this is where things got interesting. It made the national news. And they were like scarred because they were shamed so much that that pumping of their scent out into the street stopped and you don't smell Abercrombie's scent in the streets anymore. All right, one thing, one thing yakitori smells great. I don't mind yakitori smoke into the streets, but Abercrombie's perfume in the streets, it really hurt my eyes. I was, I'm sensitive, I'm sensitive. Local association, you can call it anyone that you want. But there is a Ginza Association, so they are, uh, there's a rules for the neighborhood. You have to act a certain way. Um, every neighborhood actually has a certain kind of uh, rules. But uh, yeah, you don't, the thing I think in Japan is even the convenience stores, they have to, in certain neighborhoods, they can't have like a 7-Eleven has the green and red, right? You can't have those colors in, like Izu, Izumo Taisha in Shimane. This is one of Japan's most uh, holy shrines. And Starbucks, 7-Eleven, Family Mart, all of these national chains, Matsumoto Kyoshi, they subdue their colors to brown and white. So it, they don't stick out. And it's funny to see that, but that's how serious they take it where they will subdue their brand in order to fit into the neighborhood or else they actually would have a negative impact on the consumers here for being so bright in a place where they shouldn't. They shouldn't take away from Izumo Taisha, which is a, an important cultural place. Mm. So there you go. <coughs> it's another reason you can tell the tourists from other Asian countries might be wearing really bright colors or <clears throat> like neon orange shoes or like uh, you like white pants with pink underwear or something. I'm, I'm just putting this out here. Those are usually tourists from other Asian countries. <laughs> you can tell by the way people dress where they're from. I couldn't for the first 10 years. Then after a while and having a lot of Japanese friends and hanging out with them, they mostly, for the most part, would dress pretty similar, similar styles because of the trends. And that was quite interesting to... Uh... I've seen your YouTube. Oh! Um, you, you introduce Japan, don't you? I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I recognize your big story, but I can't remember the name. Oh, only in Japan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to see Nice to see you. Where are you from? I'm from Australia. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I, I, I turned around to speaking English and I was like, I think it's 
<laughs> I am. How does this compare to Australia in summer? Is this hotter? This is way hotter. I'm it's way hotter. I'm from Sydney and this is way, way hotter. It's like the humidity, right? Yeah. It's humidity. Can I just ask, by the way, is this always closed off on Saturday and Sunday? Yeah. 12 to 5. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Um, I'm, I'm just going to take it. Can I take a photo of you? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. I don't want to get it. Oh, no, no problem. Nice seeing you. Nice to see you too. Yeah, take care. Yeah, it's way, way hotter than Sydney. I lived in Sydney in um, December, January, and February. It was like the hottest months. This is so much worse. Give him a you found me card. He's gone. I think, I think you should ask, I think you have to ask for them. I think you have to ask for them. That Ginza spot is on my bucket list for next year. You should. I think in the summer to get, you can get some bento and you can get some food from uh, um, the bakery and then bring it here to sit down. Bring it here to sit down and then you can uh, eat uh, at these picnic tables. People do that. Just make sure you clean up after yourself. The trash cans are at the convenience stores, so if you're looking for a trash can, you can find it there. But you, the reason why I walked away right now is for the exact reason that I've been talking about for the past 10 minutes. They're wearing such strong perfume. It's like you could just smell it right away. I would rather have BO than the, the perfume that they were wearing. Is there something wrong with me? Leave, a, leave it in the comments below. I want to know. Yeah, you can take it, or there's a, at the end of the street here, Ginza Ichome. There's a 7-Eleven and then you can put your trash in the 7-Eleven here. You're right there, it's coming in, in your... Wait, the convenient, that 7-Eleven is gone? No way! There used to be a 7-Eleven across the street from this UFJ uh, bank. It's, it's been out of business. So you don't, don't listen to me, don't put your trash there. I really like the uh, um, eggs and things up here. You can see there's some trees. It's nice in the fall and spring to sit outside and have your breakfast or if you can get there early enough. But they stopped doing refilled coffee. Can you believe that? Eggs and things, what a rip off. I would say positive, John. It's not even Kona coffee, it's Kona blend. It's like 5% Kona coffee. And they won't give you a refill anymore at eggs and things. I'm like what? I remember when they told me that. I said, well, at least give me a refill because you're giving me bad news. I'm like, no, can't do it. Policy. You guys are such an American chain. Actually, I think it'd be the American chain that would give you the free coffee. They're such a Japanese chain, <laughs> should I say. Oh my gosh. I could deal with antiperspirant, but not cologne. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with antiperspirants. Nothing wrong with little Old Spice original. I can deal with that. But the Old Spice, like uh, the other version, versions, this is too strong of a scent. I should change the title of this live stream to "Scents That Disturb John." <laughs> Things that that give that, that if you want to disturb me, wear really strong perfume. I'll be tolerant for like 20 minutes, and then I will walk away and say goodbye the only thing I can do. I'm looking at this window and I'm getting hungry. Wow. Yeah, perfumes. Can I wear some scents? But it's, again, it's like delicate. Like, well, you know, people, you know the scents that, that would be really good? Like the scent of melon or peach. I would like that. You know, like fresh peach, not like this chemical peach. Fresh, fresh, fresh summer peach smell. Can you rub a peach on you? I would... I would be into that. Why do you need to get like this, you know, this chemical mixture stuff that they, people wear? I don't think it smells that good. It smells like a man. You know what? I think you should rub a watermelon on you. That smells like a man. It's sweet. Like a subtle bitter sweet. Rub some vegetables on you. Like an eggplant. Now what would be a good vegetable to rub on you with a good scent? Goya. Bitter gourd. Smell like a man. Bitter gourd. That's to be the new scent of the summer. <laughs> I can see it. Package could be this this really 
nasty looking green from uh, the shape of the fruit. Jay Jersey Girls here, writing here, being an 80s Jersey girl who grew up with a fan in the window, summertime in my season. Yes, I actually couldn't find big window fans. Remember the ones you'd, you'd open the window and put a window fan in there, these big rotating 30 inch blades and you'd have the air you, and then you, in those, in this, in, at night you turn it the other way and suck all the windows that were open out that one window creating a breeze. Oh man, those are the, that, that's the summer of the 80s right there, yeah. Now it's air conditioned everywhere. You have to give credit to the, the cozy corner. They do have some good cakes in here. Wow. Some nice looking cakes. Oh, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to be on a diet in Japan. Look, they closed that business to underneath the, the bridge as well. The amount of co companies closing in Tokyo has been extraordinary. Like things that I'm just starting to notice. In fact, all the first floor of this building is closed. And I don't think it's just because of the holiday. I think they're just, they're destroying a lot of stuff and building new buildings all over Tokyo. I don't know where the investment is coming from. Japan's got a shrinking population, but I think perhaps they think do it now because you're not going to be able to do it later. But the police box, that'll stay the same. It looks like a dwarf's, uh, and the seven dwarfs, uh, um, one of those huts from the fantasy land. I like it. That's the police box of Ginza, very classical. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna head back and do some editing. It's a, it's a lazy Sunday. A lot of things are closed today. Oh my gosh, that, my hat is all sweat. But you can see the, the um, salt from sweat on it. I'm gonna have to wash it out. It's crazy. Kimono Aoki. Interesting. So here's my bike. Great thing about Sunday, Sunday is you could park just about anywhere. Just not as many uh, local K Bean or cops. There's a Toyota Century. See that across the street? These are the Rolls Royces of Japan. It's made by Toyota, and I would say that the Toyota Century might be better than a Rolls Royce. That's a bold statement. I think it's a Century. Yeah. It's a great car. Uh, Hikaru is here. Katayama. They need to come up with a truly manly smell, something like wet dog or fart in the elevator. <laughs> Do you think they would make that? You could find that at Spencer's. I remember I, I, I wasn't me, or was it? No, I think it was my younger brother. He got this fart something from Spencer's, which is like this uh, uh, 1980s mall shop of ridiculousness. They might even still have them. And he opened it up at school and I think he got in trouble because it smelled worse than somebody who, who let loose in their pants. It was really bad. And in fact, if you get it on you, that's how they can find you. You have to wear gloves. The fart spray. I think they evacuated the classroom or something. I, I can't remember. But in the 80s, you got stuff like that. Cherry bombs and fart sprays and things like this. The cops are always watching, by the way. Even though he's inside that police box, he had a megaphone. He had a megaphone and he's watching the traffic and he, he, he can... Uh, tell people to behave themselves. The fart spray was really bad. And I'm, I was shocked that they sold it at Spencer. That stuff should be illegal. Like, uh, you know what, if you wanna get, if someone's attacking you, forget the pepper spray, use fart spray. I would instantly, you know, if I was an attacker, would not, I would get away from that. Unless the attacker smelled like, I, I don't know. It's just, I think I was more re repulsive than, it, the ch than this. I like spicy foods. I probably wouldn't mind it that much. It's fart spray. That was the biggest impact. All right. Thanks, Katayama, for in introducing this to our, uh, our discussion today. A great contribution. All right, everybody. Take care. I, I hope this was useful for you. Um, the uh, top five are right here.
And uh, if you do come to Japan, you might want to consider summer not being the, be the best time to visit. But there are some other great po points about summer too, like the festivals, the longer days, the food, the kakigori, um, going to the beach. You can take off your shirt, maybe, I don't know, chill a little bit, go to the, you know, hang out at the pool. But you can't do that in the winter. But you can do that now. But you don't want to go to the onsen in the summer. That's uncomfortable. Some people do, but I prefer in the fall. I can wait a couple of months. Tokyo Disneyland is too crowded. Universal Studios Japan is too crowded. And with the summer heat and the sweating, it's not fun to go to Tokyo Disneyland in the summer. It's just not fun. So, you know, try coming in September. If, if, if you didn't like your first trip to Japan because you said it was too hot, come next time in October or, or May and you're gonna love it so much better. May is great because the flowers are out. There's some cherry blossoms up in the north and the flowers are out. It's nice. So, it's my recommendation to you. The typhoons are real though. This is my experience. Uh, this is me on, this, on the, uh, just last week, coming back from Hiroshima. The typhoon that rolled through Osaka, you could see how bad the sky looks. These, these hit Tokyo and, and, and Osaka and Japan, in particular Kyushu and Chikoku, quite often in the summer. And you, again, like just make sure you book a day early to come back early so you can have a rest day at home or a typhoon day with your flight canceled. Um, I just, I think it's a good idea if you're coming uh, in July, August, September, maybe even uh, end of June. All right, everybody. Take care. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.